Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the effect of air-to-ground radar on accuracy. So for today's scenario, I've kept it pretty straightforward. We have ourselves at Amendola Airport loaded up with a bunch of F-16s. And up at the north side of things, of course, so we have these split airports, which uh, we're basically going to use as target practice. Obviously, folks who know Operation Allied Force know exactly what I'm going to achieve. To make things interesting, of course, I'm going to go into the weather options here, and I'm going to... Rip. <laughs> no, don't do that. So we're going to go ahead and leave that alone, but we're going to crank the clouds up. Let's see, that's going to give a solid cloud cover. Yeah, it's going to be pretty nightmarish there. I certainly would not want to land it. I'll go ahead and save it. So what I've done already is I've gone ahead and set two missions up. The first one's going to be having a pair of uh, CJs here, and they're going to be attacking a bunch of buildings, which are pretty easy to spot targets. And the second group is basically going to attack a bunch of tarmac space, which has, of course, plenty of airplanes on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run the scenario as is, test it out, see what happens, and then we'll go ahead and see kind of what results. So we're going to go ahead and speed up time here. Here comes my F-16s. We're going into the IP zone here. Go ahead and speed up time a little bit so you can see it nice and easily. Here they come. They're going to be diving down into their altitude. By the way, this is a really beautiful area in the real world if you've never got a chance to actually fly over it. So my first group of F-16s, uh, these are going to be the ones attacking the buildings. They get into range. Uh, they immediately deploy their weapons. The bombs go up. Thunk. And here comes the second round of them, and they're probably going to do all sorts of nasty damage. They go ahead and pull up and get out of the way. Now my next group of F-16s uh, come running in here. Looks pretty good. Uh, they have the tougher task of hitting the tarmac. So they're ripping along about 819 feet off the ground, uh, not too, too far up. They release their bombs uh, pretty much right on schedule, which is awesome. And the uh, bombs are going to go, of course, speckle the whole tarmac, though. Looks like we got something expensive there. Let's hope it was worth it. And let's go ahead and see the results. We'll need to watch these folks fly all the way home here. So it looks to me like we went through 48 Mark 82s, typical. And it looks like we got one building, and we got six MiG-21 MF fish bidjays, which is decent given that there's 50 at that airport so let's go ahead and reload the mission here and we'll make one tiny change again we want to make one little change at a time when we're doing experiments here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell it to use the active radar from the ip all the way to winchester so we're going to go ahead and activate that looks good looks good looks good all right we need to build be one building plus six airplanes uh, let's see if it makes any difference at all to be honest i don't expect it to make that much of a difference if there is any difference at all so the aircraft comes rushing in now we're going to go ahead and set up our same scenario real fast coming in hits the ip and he's going to go ahead and flip on his radar as soon as he gets the ip the uh, radar in the f-16 by the way is not what i would consider terribly good at air to ground work that being said it will make it a little bit easier to pick out you know a building when you're trying to do a rush anybody who's played enough uh, falcon can probably speak to the efficacy of the system all right so we did a little bit of damage there Next group is uh, coming in. He flips on his radar as soon as he gets to the IP. It's always good to keep that radar silent until the last possible second, unless they're, you know, trying to spot something on the ground. He comes rushing in, uh, delivers his first package. He drops his one. Splatter, splatter. Okay, let's see how we did this time. Again, same exact scenario. We only changed if the radar was turning on. Losses and expenditures, we check it. And we did exactly, exactly the identical amount of damage. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, in the real world, you'd need that radar in order to find the target on the ground, and then you could drop the bomb on it. You are absolutely 100% correct. So I find this kind of an interesting idea. It's like, what is the point of that radar then, right? Uh, personally, I always use the radar for the purposes of uh, spotting other targets I might have been missing on the ground. Now, other of you are going, now, if you change the scenario a little tiny bit, you could probably be a little more lethal. Uh, you're absolutely right. So I'm actually going to reload this scenario. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we've learned here and I'll see if we can get a little bit more sophisticated. So my strike buildings group, I'm actually going to change their doctrine because I hate their doctrine. We're going to tell them to go ahead and use four rounds at a time. Now you're probably sitting here going, what are you doing here? Well, believe it or not, you don't have to drop the entire stack of bombs every single target that you attack. So I'm going to go flip that one on here. We'll say runway facility. We'll set that to all four. We'll do the exact same thing for the other mission as well. Yes, you can do this from the other doctrine page. This is just easier for me. Close it. We'll go to strike tarmac. That's a technical term, by the way. We're going to go over to WRA. We're going to go to this one. There really needs to be a button set all to this option. That would be so handy. Uh, so uh, Dimitris, if you're watching, uh, please make that an option. It's like the greatest thing ever. So we're going to set that, or we could set it to half or something like that. But even then, I wish you could just control, set everybody. So we're going to, we can always reset, by the way. Coming down here, looks good, looks good. Flip that one on, grab that one, flip that one on. Obviously, we don't have to set this for all of them. We could have just set it for the exact bomb building that I wanted to use, but I'm not going to. We'll go ahead and now flip on the radar again. I don't know if this is going to make any difference, but again, we're just experimenting. All right, looks pretty good. Go ahead and unpause. Let's go ahead and crank up time here. F-16's launch, I can't tell you how many times I flew this mission in Falcon. It's like, it's like bad memories at this point. 
Now, all right, we're going to come down nice and low. Our F-16s are 200 feet above ground level, or actually sea level at that point, and ground level, essentially. Uh, they come swinging down here. They uh, flip on their attack radars. Of course, um, as you guys would know, they'd be spotting individual targets. They'd be picking which one they want. They'd be uh, looking at that, the ASL line. You can see the little white line. Notice he dropped two, three, four different sets of bombs. Now, notice this guy drops a different set of bombs as well. Let's see what happens here. I speed up time a teeny little bit here. Look at that. Oh my god, that was an over-the-shoulder shot with those bombs. I love that. Look at this. Look at this. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, pop that up to losses and expenditures real quick. So we dropped the same amount of bombs. However, we got three buildings in 27 airplanes. So uh, hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, making you realize that the efficacy or lack of efficacy of the ground radar, but it also at least shows you the efficiency of a really, really clever WRA when you're trying to attack something spread out like that. Enjoy.